Hello and welcome to the recipe for SEO success. This is one of our little special episodes where we talk to real life humans who are trying to DIY their SEO, grapple the Google beast and learn more about the wonderful world of search engine optimization. And today I'm very honored to have the lovely Andrew Lau with me. Hello, Andrew Lau. Hello, Kate. <laughs> it's lovely to have you here. Um, I'm going to start by telling everyone a little bit about you uh, so they can understand what you do in your real life. So Andrew is a multimedia professional with over 17 years of experience with various communication mediums. These include film, television, digital platforms, and search ecosystems. He began his career in film television sets and moved into post-production and computer-generated graphics later. For the last 11 years, he's worked online as a business manager, digital project manager, digital producer, and search engine optimized content and copywriter. Most recently, Andrew has written content and copy for My Budget, Market Boomer, Australian Catholic Super, Barbecues Galore, Transport for New South Wales, and SitePoint. So a bit of a journey, very very similar to my journey in a way. So a, a lot of time spent in big agencies being a producer, and then you took the leap into copywriting and content writing. About how long ago was that? Oh, it's almost, <clears throat> it's almost three years ago now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and before that, it was like, you know, maybe four or five years of freelance producing for the big agencies, just like you did. So mm-hmm. I was running around like a, a wild goose with my head cut off. And then I was like, nah, enough. I'm going to take control and do some writing like I've always wanted to. And um, so, yeah, Andrew Lau, copywriter, was born. Yes, well, it's good. And I'm the same. Obviously, I come from a production background, project management. It's a hard gig. It's a hard, thankless task being a producer in an agency. You don't get, you don't get any love, really, do you? Let's be honest. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. You'll get love from some people, but there's, they're far, few and far between. Yeah. Most of them just want you to turn up, do your thing. They expect you to pull the rabbit out of the hat magically. And uh, they expect you to uh, fix the budget that's already busted and broken. So yes. what do you do when you turn up? Yeah. And manage, manage a team full of prima donnas. And, but the one thing I would say is that that experience in agency and as a producer does set you up well for certain aspects of being a freelancer, managing yeah. your time, managing budget, dealing with people. Um, so when you started as a copywriter, obviously, you, you know, you felt you could write, you had those production management skills, but what was it that chose you to go down the SEO path? Why did you decide that SEO copywriting was going to be for you? Because as we know, there's lots of people out there who say, hey, I'm a copywriter but I don't know anything about SEO. So why did you choose that? Um, I chose it because um, I I built a website for the first time with my own hands. So for years I'd I'd managed the people who designed and developed websites, um, but I'd never built one with my own hands. And I figured, okay, I've got to get myself out into the world. Um, And the key to that was search engine optimization because of projects I'd worked on previously. I developed this awareness that that was one of the keys or, you know, you could go spend a fortune on ads, which I didn't want to do. Um, so yeah, I decided, you know what, this is the future. Um, I'll learn it for myself. I'll make it work for myself and then I'll make it work for clients. Yeah. It's that proof point, isn't it? And I think a lot of people entering the market now in whatever industry you're in, it can feel like, you know, you Google the thing that you do and there are just thousands of people and it can be, a bit intimidating. You think, well, I'm never going to win this. Even if I do SEO, I'm never going to get to the top of the rankings. But spoiler yeah. people, Andrew did. So we're going to come back to that. But so before you, you know, we came into the wonderful Tooniverse, as I like to call it, how were you getting your SEO knowledge? Where were you learning about SEO? Oh, before you or? Pre-me, pre-me, PKT. Oh, God. It was on this really painful um, Toyota project. So I worked on a, I worked at, at this agency, I don't know, I think it was like 70 or 80 people. The entire agency was Toyota, Toyota, Toyota. And it was a monstrous website. And in the middle of my time there, they decided, okay, we're going to knock down this entire site and build a new one from scratch for Toyota. And, of course, um, they brought in the SEO experts to help with the search engine stuff. And so a guy named Jeremy was hanging around 
and I picked up a few things here and there. I didn't really understand what he was talking about. He, he mentioned things like Google Juice and, and, you know, he had these monstrous spreadsheets full of, you know, Toyota Corolla, Toyota Camry, uh, best Toyota Camry, you know, things like that. I thought, what is all this? But I was on the project management producing side, so we were implementing the things that he was asking us to do. Um, I didn't understand the value of any of that. I didn't, I didn't understand how it worked, but I was aware of it at the time because of that massive project. So years later when it came to doing my own thing, I was like, oh, yeah, I better go look get back into that because I think that's the way people find you online, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so you, you, you um, were on my um, course well, quite a while ago now. And uh, yeah. it's funny, lots of, lots of people come on the course and, and lots of people get value out of it. But I really feel like you're one of the people that squeezed the juice out of that course. Um, yeah. What I mean by that is that you, you did all the things, you know, because often people learn the thing and they're like, well, I did a bit of this and I did all of, a little bit of that. And it's kind of working, but you literally did all the things, right? You were very anal about the whole thing. I was because um, I built a website which was kind of mediocre, um, sitting in limbo, page 100 and something. I mean, I'm not getting any business. I knew that the key to getting business is to rise in the ranks. I mean, if you want to think of it as a funnel, then it is a funnel. Like when you've got good SEO, you're at the top, you know, page one, rank one, two, three, the inquiries start coming through. And, and then you can, if, if you want to sit there and wait for the phone calls or the emails or whatever to come through. I wanted to be in that spot. I didn't want to be the guy at like page 150 and hope that someone would call me. So I was super anal about everything that you taught because I thought this is the key. I have to do all this stuff to, to, to rise or to, you know, get maybe page 20 or page 10. I never thought I'd be page one right behind you. I didn't, I, I didn't think I would. Nor did I. So listen, listen, people, I rank number one, I think, for copywriter, Sydney copywriter, lots of different things. And, you know, I've sat here smugly enjoying that for a long time and honestly not doing an awful lot of my own SEO because I'm so busy teaching. You know, it's the cobbler's shoes thing. And to my horror and delight, the other, you know, several, several months ago, it was a year ago, it was quite quick. You rapidly moved up um, and you were right underneath me, nipping at my heels. And you're I still there today. Counting. I had a spreadsheet. Oh, I had a spreadsheet where I kind of remember the bits of software I was using, but I was measuring where I was going up and when I, when it would happen. And it was about nine to 10 months after I launched my site. So at the point of launch, I was like nowhere. And then kind of three months in, I was at page 80 and then I did your course and then I jumped up more. And then I was on page three or four for ages. Mm. And then I got, I got a couple of um, very juicy backlinks and that put me on page one. And you've stayed there pretty consistently as well. Uh, you know, we all bob about. The thing is, I think if you put in a solid, solid foundation, um, you know, it's that whole SEO is for Christmas uh, it's for life, not just for Christmas. You know, unlike Google Ads, you pay your money, you get your click. That foundation and that hard grunt work does pay off for a long time. You know, I've got posts on my site that are still delivering like 4,000 unique visitors a month. Yeah. I wrote them six years ago, but they were good. Yeah. And they, so, it, you know, it is, I think it's proof that that determination works and ticking off all the boxes and also putting in that hard effort. It puts you in this position, and I love what you said, of creating this funnel where yeah. You, the work is coming to you. You don't have to hustle. You're not in the Facebook groups fighting over copy leads like a seagull fighting over a chip. Yeah. You have people coming to you and you can kind of pick and choose. And there's some big brands that you've worked there since you went freelance. So I yeah. guess what's, how has this whole SEO thing changed your business or what, what has it meant to you? Well, it's changed my life um, because at the point at which I decided I'll be a copywriter, I'll build my crappy website. <laughs> I'll put that crappy website online. Oh, I'm at page 120 or whatever it is. Um, I was living in, a, in Sydney. Um, this is, and, you know, I'd just gotten married 
um, little concrete shitty apartment. <laughs> look, you know, look, before I go any further, you know, copywriting, I'm not rich from copywriting, but it pays the bills. It keeps the lights on. And I was going to say, now I have a baby. So my baby is exactly a year and a couple of days old. Um, over the last year, I've been able to spend a lot of time with the baby, which is what I always wanted because there's stories of all those dads who, you know, a day or two after mum's given birth, they have to run back off to the office and, and do whatever it is that they do. I was able to, um, because I've got all the inquiries flowing in, because I've got all this business, I can pick and choose, I can put jobs off, I can hold on to jobs if they like me. Um, it just gives me a lot of flexibility. So I, was ta- I would take like three months off after the baby arrived to be there for my wife, to assist in all the, you know, pee and poo cleaning and <laughs> nappy changes and staying up, well, being woken like six times a night and all that stuff, I was able to be there. And, you know, it's, it's equally nightmarish as it is wonderful. But, you know, I've been able to be there for my family and that's a lot to do with, yeah, SEO. I think it is. And, 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 and you know, I, like you, left that agency life, which is long hours, big commitments, lots of pressure, lots of stress, and lots of expectation that you would be there. If there's a pitch, we're working on the weekend, you're there. Um, and to be able to leave that behind, you know, maybe move out of the city if that's what you want to do, which we have both done. We both live on the beautiful central coast. And, you know, to have that flexibility to work. Yeah, sometimes we'll work in at two in the morning, people, but that's our choice. But sometimes we can take a whole day off and just poop around and lie on the beach and that that's such a freedom Um, and I know that so many freelancers um, are in this terrible feast and famine um, roller coaster and I don't think that ever goes away but just having that fluidity of of leads coming that pipeline there makes you just feel better about it all doesn't it yeah it's it you know like when when people say oh you've got to be headstrong and heartstrong when you become a freelancer no one's headstrong. No one's, everyone's freaking about freaking out about where the next job is coming. It's like, oh my god, I'm about to finish this project. Where's the next What's one coming? Next? I need yeah. to feed my child. But if you're consistently getting the inquiries online, you worry a little bit less. You you're do. like, well, I, I've got these five inquiries this week. I could take one of these jobs, even if I hate all these clients. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and obviously, we know we want the same clients to come back, but that pipeline is is so important. So, before we f- we finish up, I think it's you know you've obviously had such a huge success, um, you know, getting to the top of the rankings, getting this work in. You know, what would your tips be for someone else who's maybe a freelance a freelancer who's you know wondering what they should prioritize in the world of SEO because there's a lot you can do. What would maybe maybe two or three things that you would recommend that they do? Um, <laughs> I talk to my clients about what you taught me all the time. So you, I, I don't know if you called them the four pillars of SEO. I always call them the four pillars of SEO now. I think I did. I think I had three though. Maybe there's four. I've forgotten. Oh, there's three, yeah. four. Yeah. So the first one was a quality website build, you know, speedy, fast, greasy like lightning. <laughs> um, but, you know, if you've got a good developer, that's easy to do. Uh, the second one is high quality search engine optimized content, which if you've got a good copywriter or good SEO copywriter like, like me, yeah. <laughs> you can do. That's, that's easy. The third one is the one that I emphasize and it's the hardest one. And that's chasing the Google juice or as that big company called, called Moz calls it, domain authority. Um, because I, I got all the things right at the beginning. I had a good website build, even though it didn't look gorgeous. It was greasy fast, greasy lightning. Um, I had the optimized content, but I was still wasn't picking up in the index. And it's not until I got the um, high quality links that I actually started to skyrocket. So when it comes to links, not all links are the same. You've got to go get the follow links as opposed to the no follow links. And you've got to get the link, those follow links from uh, websites with a high domain authority. So I don't even bother these days with like 
websites which have a domain authority under 40. You know, I go for like 80 or 90. And it just saves you a lot of work because a lot of people go for those, they try to get like 50 different links from like websites which have like an, a domain authority of 10 or 20. Whereas if you just get one link from a site that has a domain authority of 90, you're flying already. And that's only, it only takes one or two. Yeah. Did you do that via guest blogging and, uh, you know, sending articles off? How, how, what are your best strategies? Yeah, well, um, one of the highest domain authority sites that linked back to me was um, SitePoint. And I pitched articles to them. Um, and they gave me a follow link on both articles. And they've got a domain, yeah, I think they've got a domain authority of 89 or something. And so I, I started flying. Um, I wrote articles about stuff I like. So, you know, I'm a movie nerd. So I, write a, I wrote a bunch of stuff about movies. And I know a lot of screenwriters, screenwriters who've been working a long, long time with monstrous sites that have like, 50,000 articles all about movies and they have uh, domain authorities of about 70. And when I wrote these articles about films like, you know, geeky sci-fi stuff like Aliens or whatever, I popped that off to those screenwriters and they go, oh, this is cool. I'll link back to you. I didn't even ask for a link. Right. Said, I'll link back to you. And then I was like, whoa, okay, I'm skyrocketing again. So... Juicy, high quality, dom high domain authority links is, is the way forward. I so agree. We should just say that the fourth pillar is social media, which is kind of it's kind of causation correlation. Doesn't have a direct impact, but can help a lot. Yeah. I think that's so important with the backlinks, and I'm really glad you talked us through that. You know, the, the attitude is always the harder a link is to get, the better it is to have usually. Yeah. So, you know, you do have to almost put your best content on other people's sites, pitch yeah. articles, be rejected, try again, because yeah. it, it is worth it. And as you said, you can get a link from your mum's blog about cats, um, yeah. which is great. Thanks, mum. Or yeah. you can work hard to get an article on one of these premium websites. And, it, and I like the way that it's not, not necessarily about exactly what you do so you know you've got a yeah. few sideways or diagonal links in that are relevant but not necessarily i am copywriter i like that yeah yeah although um there is value in getting the links from the lower domain authority sites at the beginning you know when you're starting out a little bit of something is better than absolutely oh nothing. exactly i'm very so, much about the mopping up the crumbs and it makes a whole biscuit i've got lots of low when i heard you say yeah. that saying oh I'm, I'm only going to go for sites with a domain authority over 40 <laughs> i was like oh god i have not so yeah. i you know i do i'll take whatever i can get but it's about yeah. the effort you know if i'm going to get yeah. a link from a low quality site maybe i won't spend six hours writing a glorious article from that i'll just rush something off but if I'm yeah. going to get a link from like some major magazine yeah. or whatever I'll yeah. put the I'll put the time in you know and, so. and that kind of thing is good for business too it because is, yeah. if you're you know if I don't know if, you, if you're in the homewares business and you want to write for a website that's all about homewares and the the website has a domain authority of like 90 you want that you want to be you want to frame yourself as an authority with that content on the homeware site, link back to your site because it's a funnel. Yep. It's a link back. So you're getting the juice, you're getting the traffic, then you're getting the inquiries. It's, it's a win-win in every way. It is. And it's yeah. building that brand authority and that relevance as well. Yeah. So awesome. So your, your number one tip is, yes, of course, have the site, have the optimized content, but don't underestimate the value of links because that's what can kind of help you skyrocket. Is that, yeah. that, that a good summary? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, I was going to add another one. Have a bloody Google My Business listing. Oh, yeah. Because so many people are like, oh, I'm scared someone's going to knock on my door. You don't have to have your real address on there. You can have a virtual office uh, address or something, but just have a listing. That listing will help with the geolocation. Um, so if you want to be copywriter Melbourne or copywriter Sydney or homeware maker, bling, blong, bloody blah, blah <laughs> you've got to have that listing and then have some reviews on there. And then, again, your website will skyrocket. Indeed. You can always set a service area. I'm going to have to have an explicit rating on this podcast because I think Andrew said bloody about seven times. That's fine. I could, I'm well, not going to beep you out. You, you've said it again. Stop <laughs> saying it. 
good. Thank you. Well, Andrew Lau, thank you so much for um, coming on the Reality SEO podcast. Where can people find out more about, I know where they can find you, right behind me. Uh, yeah. Tell us where we can find more about you. Um, well, if you Google search, and, uh, sorry, Sydney, if you do a Google search for Sydney Copywriter or Copywriter Sydney, or even Copywriter, you may find me a position or two behind K2. Or yeah. you can just put in my uh, URL, andrewlowcopywriter.com. Awesome. Well, there we go. The student becomes the master. It's been awesome uh, to talk That's to you. That's not true. That's not true. It is. You're What's still the master. It's, the, it's like karate kids. You're like karate kid? Karate kid. Like I'm sensei. You're, oh, anyway, you know what I mean. You're Ralph Macchio. I think that's what we're saying at the end of the day. Uh, um, okay. You'll take that. Awesome. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this show, please feel free to leave a rating and review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you heard it. Your review will help us with our iTunes optimization and help more people find the show. And uh, if you did like this episode, head to www.therecipeforseosuccess.com where you can learn more about Andrew, check out his website and see the transcript for the show. Finally, if you haven't already, head to the I Love SEO group with Kate Toon on Facebook, uh, where I share daily tips, advice and general funny stuff. So hope to see you there. Thanks again for listening. Happy SEOing. Mm-hmm.